Hello, my YouTube friends, and welcome back to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Today, I'm going to be doing a look inside video on the Bowers & Wilkins ASW608 subwoofer. This is the smallest subwoofer out of the 600 series lineup, and I've been using this subwoofer for the past six months behind my theater chairs to add a little bit more dimension and bass to our movie theater experience. Now, I got to say, I've been really impressed with the bass output from this subwoofer considering its small compact size. So I thought now would be a good time to do a teardown video of this subwoofer. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the TS parameters of the driver. We're going to look at the cabinet construction, and then we're going to take a look at the amplifier. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this driver because I'm curious to see what kind of driver Bowers & Wilkins is using. So the first thing I got to do is uh, remove this beauty ring right here. I'm hoping a credit card and a screwdriver will allow me to do that with relative ease. Once I get that out, it should reveal the bolts that fasten the driver to the uh, front baffle. So let's get started. Holy cow, I don't think I've ever seen this many screws being used on an 8-inch driver before. BMW is using 8 Phillips head screws to fasten this driver to the front baffle. BMW is also using metal inserts on the front baffle for better clamping force. The driver that B&W is using in the ASW608 is pretty nice. The driver features a large butyl rubber surround and the comb material is made from a hybrid paper and aramide fiber. I'm not familiar with aramide so I looked into it and found that they are a man-made fiber with enhanced structural properties and are known for their incredible tensile strength. They are used in advanced products where lightweight and high strength is needed. It seems like the perfect combo to make a subwoofer cone from. The motor structure consists of two decent sized ferrite magnets that are stacked on top of each other. Having a double stacked magnet arrangement like this will increase efficiency and in most cases will increase BL too. B&W is also using a bump plate to increase the subwoofer's excursion abilities. What's cool about the 608 is B&W is triple venting, triple venting the voice coil on the driver which will give it some good power handling for an 8 inch driver. The most obvious one is the vented pull piece which cools the voice coil indirectly. The second method is by venting the voice coil underneath the spider. And the third is by using a vented cone coupler. All of this tech that B&W is using is enclosed in a basket made from stamped steel. Now let's see how much this driver weighs. This driver weighs 6 pounds and 5.6 ounces. Enclosed is the impedance sweep of the 608 driver. This driver has a nice smooth impedance sweep with little to no audible resonances taking place. The resonant frequency came in at 43 Hz and the impedance had a low of around 3 ohms and a high of 46 ohms at its resonant frequency. BL came in at 8.9 tesla meters which is pretty strong for an 8 inch driver. Voice coil inductance measured at 2.6 millihenries which is pretty high compared to other subwoofers in this price range and size. There are two schools of thought surrounding the impact of inductance in subwoofer drivers. There are some who believe that high inductance will have an effect on a subwoofer's transient response, and the other side believes it has no effect. Personally, I think inductance is an important variable to consider. I'll leave links in the description to a few sites that talk about this very subject so you can make up your own mind about it. The plate amplifier is held in by 8 Phillips head screws and takes up the entire surface area of the back wall. B&W covers the guts of the amplifier with a plastic covering, but it's pretty easy to take off once the four screws have been removed that hold it in place. At the heart of this subwoofer is an amplifier that utilizes an amp module designed by Bang & Olsen. B&W is using Bang & Olsen's Ice Power Amplifier Technology Modules in the ASW608. The particular module that Bowers & Wilkins is using is the 200 ASC. This is a Class D amplifier that uses a switch mode power supply 
so you won't find a big chunky transformer here. This amplifier is rated for 200 watts of RMS power at 4 ohms, which should be plenty for this 8 inch driver. One of the cool things about the 608 is that it has high level inputs, so it will work with older equipment that does not have a sub out connection. In this scenario, you could run speaker cable from your receiver's left and right channels to the subwoofer speaker level in connections, and then you'll have bass. The other connection method is your typical stereo RCA inputs, which most equipment sold today do have. Another neat feature is this subwoofer has several EQ and bass extension settings that will help you fine tune the sound of various room sizes. If the bass extension switch is set to position A, then it will provide the most bass extension while selecting C will provide the least extension. Setting it to B provides a compromise between A and C. Personally, my favorite setting is A because it gives the most rumble and slam, but I'm also using this subwoofer with two other subwoofers and a large room. If this is going to be a primary subwoofer for you, and it will be placed in a large room, then you might want to select option B or C so you don't exceed the limits of the driver. The EQ has two settings, A or B. The EQ switch alters the subwoofer's bass roll-off alignment. Position A gives a drier alignment, more suited to placing the subwoofer in a corner or compensating for room residence. Position B is suited to a less resonant room and is to be used away from a corner. Personally, I like setting A, but this really depends on the room that the subwoofer is placed in, so I recommend trying it both ways. Other features include an adjustable low-pass filter from 25Hz to 140Hz and volume control. Overall, this amplifier is nicely packed with features, and I especially like the different EQ and bass extension settings. The cabinet for the ASW608 is pretty well constructed, and it should be considering the price point that this subwoofer sells at. The front baffle is 1 inch thick, and the rear cabinet wall is 7 eighths of an inch thick. I would assume the side walls are the same thickness as the rear cabinet wall, but can't verify. B&W has stuffed the inside of the cabinet with the material that I'm guessing is made from polyester fiber, or at least looks and feels like it. This material is good for absorbing standing waves, and for also tricking the driver into thinking that it's in an enclosure larger than it really is. Even the finish on the cabinet is also pretty nice. The exterior cabinet walls appear to be wrapped in a vinyl and have a small texture to it. In my opinion, this textured finish gives the speaker a more industrial look. The front baffle is finished using a material that is smooth to the touch and has the name Bowers & Wilkins etched into it. Overall, a pretty nice cabinet. I'm impressed by what the 608 had to offer and have really enjoyed my time with it. Its size is perfect for people who need to place a subwoofer in a tight area where space is limited. I currently have this subwoofer placed behind my theater chairs to give us a little more bass slam, but it has also been instrumental in adding more dimension and depth to our sound experience. Once you have multiple subwoofers, it's hard to go back to just one. Some of the features that I like most about the ASW608 are the EQ and bass extension settings. These features have really helped me dial in this subwoofer into my room without being overly boomy. Some of the things that I don't like are the price, but B&W has never been known for value. If you want a good quality compact subwoofer, then the ASW608 offers quite a bit of bass for its size, and I have no problem recommending it to family and friends. And that's my look inside video on the ASW608. If you'd like to see more look inside videos, make sure to hit that like button. So long and happy listening.